Hey there guys, what's going on? We're back today with another gameplay breakdown video. This game was sent to us by VForce X again, and I will be breaking down this and reviewing this 10 kill game from him. If you do want to send me some of your gameplay to review and break down, feel free to upload an unlisted YouTube video and send the link to my email, which is less than average gaming at hotmail.com, or join my community Discord with this particular link here and just send me the video. Either way, let's try and get this one to 20 likes because I actually do really enjoy breaking down your guys' gameplay. I feel like we're all improving at the game slowly, and with tips like these, basically we can all get better together. We did recently hit 1,500 subscribers, which is pretty wild, so I guess 1,600 is next. So let's jump straight into the gameplay breakdown here. Okay, so right off the bat here, this is already a better start than last time. I remember we just sort of dropped willy-nilly in the last time, and this time we are dropping straight on a scavenger contract, which I can't really fault here. This is a good call. Okay, so I hate these rocks. This is one of the things that I said was wrong with Warzone at the moment, basically. You can't climb these rocks for some reason. Like, everything about previous Call of Duty games says that we should be able to climb these rocks, but apparently they're just not, and it's wrong. Like, these should definitely be climbable. We should be able to get up here, especially with your, like, fully trained, like, military man. He's super strong. He can just carry around all these different weapons and stuff like that, but he can't climb some rocks. That's pretty dumb. Okay, I'll say this here. The only thing that we realistically should be looking for at this point is armor. We've got a couple of weapons already, and like we really shouldn't be looting these houses. We just have to be moving towards our contract, so we're just going to keep an eye out for armor pieces and stuff like that, but we don't really need to be keeping looking for these chests here, as we're going to be finding some now. Okay, you might not have seen it, but there is a dead body here. We do need to be a little bit more careful now. Basically, we just sort of have to keep our eyes up, looking at pretty much everywhere we are on high alert here. Okay, I'm pretty sure you would have heard that. That's a footstep, and I'm pretty sure you heard it too, based on your turning around, so good ears here. Yeah, definitely a guy around here. Okay, so fair enough, we got a kill. We're on the board here, basically. We did hesitate a little bit too long before firing. This might just be because I'm unlucky, but whenever I hesitate in Warzone, I get killed. Like, if I'm a little bit off firing first, I'll die. So definitely make sure you shoot first. Like, this dude was running out in the open. We could have just fired and killed him straight away. So we are finally moving towards our first scavenger drop after 3 minutes and 23 seconds, which is a little bit slow. Okay, so the ATV is a very interesting choice here. I just heard shots where right, and I'm sure you would have heard them as well. And I guess they're about 250-ish meters away, which would be about the stadium. So if we do get on this ATV and head towards our scavenger drop, enemies are going to be alerted to our presence here. So this is kind of interesting. But I do really rate able to put the trophy system on the vehicle very, very high. That's a highly big brain play. And it's doing some goofy shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. I wonder if the actual trophy system is going to work like this. I suppose we'll find out. I think i got to say this here. Like, you've definitely improved since your last gameplay. Like, we are much, much better off here. And I think I'm going to say this a hundred more times based on the script that I've got here. But, yeah, you've improved an awful lot since our last gameplay review. <laughs> Amazing. So I noted in our previous gameplay breakdown that our guy here missed a couple of RPG shots in the last gameplay. He definitely couldn't have missed this one here. This is a good kill. I really like this kill. It's very, very good. Alrighty, we can probably just lay down here. Like, we're getting shot from over here somewhere. I don't actually know the exact location of the shot. I'm pretty sure you don't either. So we should definitely lie down and try and get a better idea of where we're being shot from and then sort of work our way around this truck from here. There's a go. But again, we seem to manage a pretty good kill here. The only thing I would have done would be to switch to the other optic in this close range fight, but other than that, there's nothing really wrong with this fight here. 510 is a little bit slow for our first loadout drop. Like, this is fairly behind the eight ball at this point. If we sort of started sprinting towards our loadout drops a lot faster, we would have been on our way basically straight away. We did have like two or three fights and we got gimped by those rocks at the start, but again, 
Like, as you can see here, we do a big mistake, and we just chuck it out in the open. Like, this is not a good spot to be doing this. But there is a building just here, but we can basically just throw it at, like, the ground just, just here and then get away with it. And so, yeah, like I said, if we just chuck it at the door, basically, we can just sort of pick it up straight away, and then we'll be on our way rather than having to sit out in the open like this. All right. Now, as I was writing this script, I hadn't seen what actually happens. But I do know where the zone does end up. But as I was writing this script, I don't know what's going to happen in this game. But we really should be heading either towards farmland or sort of this side of the map and get like a recon contract done or something. Like, there's a recon contract around a couple of different places, like here, here, and here. Or we can just sort of head straight towards farmland because at the moment we're in the crunch zone. So anyone who's still over on this half of the map is definitely going to be pushing towards this way. And we're in a very bad spot at the moment once these people do come in. So we definitely just sort of want to be on this half of the map. And we can sort of push in this way if it does end up being that way, which I know it doesn't. The zone does end up being down here near the prison. So if we sort of move this way early, we can sort of take control of farmland and be a little bit better prepared. Okay, so it's a very good idea if you do see someone on your minimap and then on your real map to mark them just to keep sort of tracks on where they might have been. Like we do know that this guy is up here and I'm guessing he's on the roof as that's where most people sit on the TV station. So keeping an eye on him is a good idea. Oh, very good ears there. We did hear the guy. We got sort of alerted to the fact that there was a dude dropping in here. And we just got the kill. Very, very good work. Oh, got an enemy. Very, very good trigger discipline there. Like, I just know for a fact that I definitely would have shot at this dude missed and given away my position all at the same time. And because we didn't give away our position, we get a very, very clean shot on this dude. I want to basically take all the credit for your improvement, but I don't remember saying anything last time about sniping. So this one's on you. You did a fantastic job here getting this kill. Like, you led him nicely and then just hit the shot, so. Poor guy. Okay, as I said earlier, we definitely still need to be moving towards farmland. Like, that's basically where the zone's pointing us towards. It's going to be on the other side of the stadium. And... We do need to move there quite quickly because we're still, again, in the crunch and people are going to be moving towards us, so we've got to get out of this area very, very quickly. Personally, I would take the quad bike and then just sort of move around this left-hand side of the stadium, like move way, way around and then sort of move around the back side of the map, but we'll see what happens here. From what I can tell by watching this video, we just have an overall higher sense of awareness than the last time I saw you play. Basically, in your last gameplay review, we were very timid and sort of moving around very slowly. We're unsure of what's going on. And now we seem quite confident, but we're still wary of someone being around. Like, we're not cocky. We're not just 100% sure that we're not going to get killed. We're still looking around for people with this is a very, very big improvement. But as you can see kind of clearly on the minimap here, there's a car here with the sort of buy station on top of it. Basically, this means that somebody is here right now or was here a little while ago. I would bet on someone still being here and we should probably be a little bit more careful than we're about to be. Because having watched this before, I know what's about to happen. And sprinting right now is not being careful. Like, we have all this information presented to us. We know that there's a car here and there's probably somebody sitting in this window or up in this sort of attic area here waiting to shoot down on anyone who jumps on the buy station. So we really shouldn't be giving away our position by sort of sprinting around here. We just sort of got to take this quite slow and then sort of not die to anyone who might be sitting in these rooms. But I think we did get quite lucky here without having anyone sitting here and stealing the car is probably a fairly good idea. But we're about to head through, and I have seen this already, like we are about to head through all the way through the city where if we just go sort of around this side of the stadium and get away around the back. We've got a better chance of not getting sniped from one of these buildings. It isn't very likely for people to be sitting up here at the moment because the zone's sort of pushing them towards farmland. But if we drive through the city, we have a much higher chance of dying to somebody sniping us, especially when we're in this car, than if we go around the other side of the stadium. Now the minimap here, again, it's not very clear, but there is a truck at this at this fire station that we have here. I feel like we should definitely take this as it does offer us better protection. At the moment, they are quite slow and sort of very hard to turn and they're not actually that quick, but they do have a lot more armor and it makes us a lot harder to get shot, especially if I'm concerned about sort of getting sniped from these buildings. So I'd swap for the truck, but we don't. We just sort of keep driving through. But now that I know why we came here, this seems like a very, very good idea. We're definitely already after this ammo as soon as we do get here. Like, we knew this was here. This is an awesome idea. So, kind of mad props for not listening to what I said and just sort of going around the edge of the map. As we do get a little bit of extra ammo here, we come here, grab the ammo straight away.
Okay, we definitely did hear footsteps here, and we know that they're in this building. I would guess that they're on the second floor, like they're just going to peeking out of the windows and stuff like that, but we'll see what happens. Personally, I would not take out the heartbeat sensor immediately here. Like, we don't really know where this dude is, so if we move up the stairs as we're looking on our heartbeat sensor, we can very easily die if he just goes, oh, there he is. So if we sort of peek around this corner with our gun up and then check on the heartbeat sensor... We're better off here than we're less likely to die, as we do already know that somebody is here and they could have pushed us while we did have our heartbeat sensor out. Okay, so we do actually know the position of this man now, so we can definitely just like keep checking our heartbeat sensor and just make sure he's sort of in this kind of area here. Okay, so we did work out that he is on the roof of this building. I would not have guessed that. I figured he was probably in in this building here. So we're going to work out a way to kill this guy without giving away our position. Now, this is an, a fairly interesting strat here. This is a very good call to fire this inside the building. As typically, if you do fire it while you're in the building, the enemies who are on the roof don't get notified if there is a kill streak incoming to kill them. So hopefully this does work. I know what happens here. Okay, so we didn't get our kill here. And the only thing that I can theorize is that maybe we didn't get the kill because we were on the second floor of this building too close to the roof and he did get the warning. It's hard to say why we didn't get the kill here because this dude should still have died regardless of what happened there. So I would only guess that he got the warning and sort of jumped off the roof. Okay, I heard the footsteps and I'm not really 100% sure where they are. So we've got to be on high alert here. Okay, we did, did hear those footsteps from behind us, so he's either still on the roof or coming up the stairs right now. And that proves that he's coming up the stairs and we're about to kill him. This is a very, very good kill here. Nice, that dude didn't even think we were going to be there, so you could tell because he was still sprinting around the corner. He didn't even have like an idea of where we'd be, so we did well to not give away our position here. Okay, we do have shots here. We can see that guy is a pretty easy kill. And we do a very, very good job of leading this target and then just popping him in the head. This is a very satisfying kill. I do really like this a lot. Okay, so we've got an enemy somewhere in this barn. And this is pretty important to pay attention to where exactly he might have been. Okay, so we can see that he did just get on the quad bike and he's going to leave. So this should make us still wary that there might be someone else around, but we do know that at least one person did leave here. But now that we check on the heartbeat center, there's definitely still somebody here. So we do need to be very, very careful about what happens here. Okay, so let me break down exactly what I think happened here. We knew that there was a guy still around. The heartbeat sensor did say that there was somebody still on this building somewhere. And then I'm imagining that we saw that quad bike drive past that we already knew was there. And we just sort of assumed that the guy had already left. Like, there was some kind of connection that we made between that dude on the quad bike and what the heartbeat sensor said. And I guess we can obviously know that that was wrong now, but... I mean, it's one of those things where, like, you can just assume sometimes, like, your brain automatically just assumes that that information that it's giving you as he drives away on the quad bike is what the heartbeat sensor was talking about. But as we know now, that, like, this dude was probably sitting here for about five minutes and just got the kill on us, which is a little bit unfortunate. Okay. So, I really don't like this Gulag kill. Like, we did get very, very lucky here. Like, if the other player was any good, like, I've died to this exact situation before. Like, you were still sprinting around a corner as you did see the enemy. So if we sprint around like this, he just gets his gun up. If he's not sprinting, put it like this. If you're sprinting and the enemy isn't sprinting, you'll get there first, but they'll have their sights up before you get a chance to. And if he was any good, he gets the kill here. I think we did get pretty lucky with this particular kill. So if any single number of 
unlimited snipers who might be around here looks up, they're going to get a free kill. So we just basically have to get on the ground as soon as possible. We need to just pick a spot. Like, if we pick over here, I mean, we shouldn't pick over there because there's a dude there. But if we sort of pick anywhere along here and just sort of drop straight away, we can be way, way safer than if we're just sort of floating around for the next 10 minutes. Like, this is the dude I did spot. So we definitely don't want to land here. We want to bring it back around and sort of stay as close as we can to the prison, basically to give us a number of different cover options from the walls, basically. What is this dude doing? What is... <laughs> So he's probably scared, hurt, and feeling a little bit embarrassed right now. Like, that was just something else, man. Very, very specialist here. He doesn't even seem to be noticing that we're... Oh, my God. I've never seen a kill like that before in Warzone. Like, that's unbelievable. I cannot believe that I just watched that. Like, this, is, this guy here is my hero, the dude who just died. You feel so bad for a guy like that, man. <laughs> As I was saying, our best spot to sit in at the moment, if somebody just shoot at us, like, they can't really shoot at us while we're sort of up against the, the prison walls here. Like, we're fairly safe and we do blending quite well if we are sort of lined up against these walls and we can't get shot from the top, at least in theory. Like this. This here, I mean, you can't really see it very well because of the quality of the video, but no way around that. If we're sitting along here, like, this is a very safe place to sit. Like, nobody is typically going to be able to shoot us from here unless we get unlucky and they're sitting on this cliff. And we'll blend in quite well, so this is a fairly good spot for us to sit here. And again, I know what happens here, and I don't really like what we're about to witness here. This is not really good gameplay. Like, there's definitely a little bit of element of unfortunate here. Like, it's a bit lame, but there is a quad bike coming up on us right now, and we're not really reacting to it. Okay, we got it now. Would have been an easy kill on this guy, and we sort of let him just run past. And now we work out that we're about to get stuck by the gas and the actual like rock formation here. Yeah, this is this is not good. <laughs> like here, this is a fine spot to sit. If somebody does shoot us while we're here, there isn't really much we could do about it anyways. So like taking up the best positioning that is available is probably the best idea. Like this is a good spot to sit. And if we get shot from somewhere, there isn't an awful lot we can do about it. Like, we blend in very, very well here. But unfortunately, like, this is a bit of bad luck. We do get shot here from this particular spot. Like, again, this is a bit of bad luck. Like I said, this is actually a good spot to sit. Like, and being forced to push back probably did kill us here. If we were just, like, running, or didn't have to run all the way back here. We sort of, in this position already, we maybe get the kill on this guy. We see him drop down here. We get an easy kill. But because we did run around, have a look over here, and didn't take up the position early, we do get basically just sort of sniped very, very easily by this particular dude here. But big props for not dying to that claymore, because that very easily could have killed you. And yeah, just getting a little bit unlucky with this particular last fight. If anything, us running under the bridge did get us killed here. Like, if we did choose our spot earlier, like I said, we might not have died. But then again, that dude could have been sitting there for like the last 10 minutes. So it's one of those things that we can't really avoid in that particular situation. We just didn't have the right positioning sometimes. And, and that does happen. Sometimes you just get pushed by someone who has a better position than you. We can try and avoid that typically, like just by sitting in the right spots earlier. But again... It's one of those things that we can't typically avoid here. All right, so my final thoughts on this one. I feel like we were almost watching a different player as the game did go on. Like from the last time, comparing this to the last time, we've got a basically different player here. We've definitely learned a lot. You can see the massive improvement and we're definitely still getting better. Like this particular positioning here, we did get very unlucky. Like if we were just sitting here and then the dude dropped down onto this platform, we get a pretty easy kill and this thing goes basically the other way and we keep going, we maybe get the W. But again, just a bit unlucky. There are some things for sure that we still do need to work on, like, and I've detailed them fairly quickly in this video, but we're still definitely getting better, and that's the major takeaway from this one. We are definitely a better player than we were previously, so do keep on the grind, and we will continue to get better for sure. Like I said at the start of the video, if you do want me to review your gameplay and give tips on how we can get better at Warzone or multiplayer or anything that you do like here, feel free to send me a video. As of course, you can upload an unlisted video and send me an email to less than average gaming at hotmail.com or join my community Discord with this link on the screen here and then send me the footage. This series even helps my game too as we all learn how to get better at Warzone and Call of Duty in general a little better each time. Like, this even makes me think about my positioning a little bit more. Like, what would I tell myself if I was in this particular situation here? Anyway, thank you very much for watching, dudes. I will see you in the next one. Bye!